And I want to address an important question. How do we move forward? Now the paradox as I got it, because I don't make speeches, is that my colleagues accused this side of making speeches, and in the process they made speeches. <laughs> but having said that, having said that, my Lord, an issue has arisen following disclosures by my Lord Justice Brimmer about how this thing has been constituted. You, it's now apparent that uh, the petitioner and the, fifth, the, the first interested party in Petition 15 have an issue with that. We suggest that we be given time to file a formal application. It could not have been filed earlier because the disclosure has been made here. And since that issue goes to the core of your capacity, it ought to be resolved preliminarily. Whether you have been properly empaneled is the most preliminary of preliminary issues. We add that you give direction to the nature of a timeline when that application ought to be filed, a timeline when responses will be filed, then give us a return date to come and kind of ask that application on whether you are properly constituted. Because if it turns out that you are improperly constituted, even the issue of recusal becomes secondary. But if it comes out that they, you are properly constituted, then the, sec the issue of recusal now follows. I urge that if you follow that route, in accordance with my teacher's guide and Professor Gil Mwigai, there will be greater order and coherence. I'm not, is that an adjournment? Is that Mr. Boy applying for an adjournment? Because he's saying, and perhaps he's not wrong, that even the recusal application comes after the termination of the question of empanelment. If that be so, and they, may leave, they, 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 they normally leave court, they may leave, they left, uh, Senate, may leave court. We let them say whether they are going or not going. Is that, um, is that the mark they normally leave court, where the left Senate might uh, palatable in this court, my lord? I need mean, that. No, because it's an adjournment. No, no, is that the mark palatable before my lord and my lady? But because, you know, we, we have decorum at the bar. If you have a professor of law, Misbehaving at the bus, <laughs> <laughs> I think that you direct that that remark will be withdrawn first, then we make progress. I'm urging my lord. The remark was made in your presence. I'm urging it will be withdrawn first, then I can respond. My lord, I have no problem with withdrawing the remark. But the point is, it is a vain application for adjournment. Because Mr. Ward is saying that the court must address the question of empowerment before the recusal. So I have, I am answering your question, but I know that he has withdrawn. He said he has no problem with withdrawing, but I did withdraw. I want him to withdraw first, my lord, because I'm entitled to dignity. I have no problem with withdrawing. Yeah, my friend, my lord. No, I have no problem, my lord. I withdraw the remark, but there is practice. Thank you. Let me now address the question. As I guess. <laughs> uh, my, my, my lord, Professor Gender was my teacher and my mentor of many years. I have no disrespect for him. I just have my own dignity asserted because I can't protect my client's dignity if my own is in question. But having said that, um, my Lord Judge Brima, you are a witness that the issue of how this bench was empaneled has been disclosed here, when we are here. We have raised concerns through Lanet's colleagues, uh, Kido Mungai, and Lanet colleague, Mr. Njeru, uh, Mr. Ndegwa, that we now want to take that on an issue. My colleagues have rightfully submitted that that matter requires a substantive application. Rightly, we agree with them fully. But you'll agree with me that if you are improperly constituted, then you cannot make one more step. It's therefore in that request that my Lord Judge Brima asked, how do we move forward? I also had my learned uh, mentor, Professor Kedu Mwega, again ask, how do we move in an orderly manner? I'm suggesting let that substantive application be placed before you. Being as preliminary as it appears on the face of it, give back-to-back -back timelines on the compliance by the parties. Let the parties come and now formally address you on that question. Let us have a determination on that question. I humbly plead. Again, on how to move forward. Thank you. Allow me, my lords and my lady, to address the issue of disclosure, which is actually being attributed to Mr. Justice Mbima. And sometimes it's good to tell the truth because the issue of how this page was empowered has not come to light, which is now. They actually knew of it, and this, and they all should have, they would have found out. The letter which was written this morning, which we have 
it was received on the it was received on the twentieth, the twentieth of October, as actually one pertinent question disposed whether the file was actually taken to the Chief Justice and at what time. So there are actually no means something regarding that. That we are dealing with constitutional functions under Article 165.4, which means they were saying only the Chief Justice can constitute this bench. So they actually knew how the bench was constituted, and that possibly the only reason we should be given is why the file was taken to ECJ, possibly because of the absence of the Chief Justice. They will have to tell themselves to why we have the Chief Justice being the head of the judiciary and the Deputy Chief Justice being the deputy head of the judiciary. In the absence, that's what the constitution provides. In the absence of the chief justice, it is the deputy chief justice who is supposed to do administrative work. Which and, and here, let's not feel bastard what you are told. That as we do in the parliament, you go around in circles to waste time so that the motion possibly is defeated by a solution of time, which is what they are trying to do. The truth is this: it is well known in practice that. The court's administrative functions can be done at any time of the day, including this bench, can sit up to midnight without anybody, anybody questioning. So the issue when the Chief Justice, the Chief Justice sat does not arise. As to what happened on Saturday, again, this is purely administrative. All right, but then, uh, for the speaker of the Senate, may we be heard? Yes. Uh, my Lord, allow me to assist the court. And uh, we're not listening to the speech, not an application made by my colleagues uh, on the petition aside. But Lord, I just want to state that uh, the deputy president filed his petition on Friday. And my Lord, on the same day, he got conservatory orders. My Lord, he accessed justice in accordance with the framework in Article 48 of the Constitution. But my Lord, justice cuts both ways. My Lord, the respondents on the same day filed an application to set aside those conservatory orders. My Lord, properly constituted, this court has issued directions that those applications be heard today. My Lord, under the Mutunga rules, there is a fundamental doctrine which we are all missing the doctrine of timely resolution of that kind of disputes, especially disputes that are of immense public interest. So, my Lord, if you look at the application which has been made, or speech made by the, by, 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 by the petitioners, my Lord, you will see that they want to split hairs. My Lord, the Constitution expressly provides that the Chief Justice shall appoint uh, a bench to sit on matters, which raise substantial questions of law. But my Lord, at the same time, that constitution which requires to be read conjunctively says the deputy chief justice shall deputize the chief justice. So my Lord, what is the fuss about it? So my Lord, my request is that the application this each by the, by the petitioners is solely meant to delay the business of the day. And my Lord, I request in public interest, my Lord, I request in public interest that you give directions we proceed with the application. We are here to respond the application uh, for conservatory orders. And my Lord, you also hear our application to set aside the conservatory orders. My Lord, that will make juridical sense and promote public interest. Thank you. My Lord, if I may just add, uh, this